Hey, everybody. The round 16 preview continues, and uh, I've gone and gotten one of the better fan channels in the league, to be honest. I've got Jake from Saints TV with me to preview this match. Jake, welcome back, mate. We do it all over again. I know, mate. I know. It feels like a... What's it? It's the third time, fourth time now we've done it since 2018, yeah? Yeah. Well, I think we spoke... Yeah, we did. We spoke before the preseason game. That's right. We were on. We did that. We did last year and you guys... It's actually complete opposite to last year, isn't it? Because you were nervous and we were kind of a chance still to sneak the eight on a good run. And then you just pantsed us on the Thursday or Friday night. Mate, I remember that game last year. Obviously, we won the game. It was a great win. But we were so... or I was so like distraught from 2021 that... (laughs) <laughs> like the win was good, but you just, it was almost like a kick to the face. It was like, where's this been all year? Mm. Um, but you've backed it up. You've actually backed it up. So, I mean, you've, uh, you've got a little smirk on your face. I know I spoke to the, um, was it the Blues Brothers, the potty on the Almost Blues Brothers? Almost yes. Blues Brothers. Yeah. That was a good chat. And they were, um, they were pretty, pretty chuffed, pretty up and about. So, I'm pretty nervous about Friday night, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not feeling too confident just yet. Yeah, I, I just did my preview and it just went out, and mm. um, it's a really weird one for me this week. And I'm not, I'm being dead serious. Like last week, I was pretty confident we'd beat Frio because you know it's at home, it's at our house, it's not over there in Perth. Um, they're up and about, but I, I follow the Saints. Probably because of you, to be honest. Ever since I've met you, I've just followed them a little bit more closely. And the one thing about the Saints that I've always noticed is it's the moment you start writing them off that they win this massive game. And they've lost a couple in a row now. You know, Mm -hmm. you've won five in a row early in the year, looking fantastic. And it's, I'm not going into this game saying, oh, you know, how good we're going to be. I know how good we can be. But I also know that the moment you think you've got St. Kilda figured out, um, either way, good or bad, mm. they they know they find a way to um to prove you wrong. That is uh, that is the frustrating thing about being a Saints fan, mate. Um, the inconsistency, like in within the same season, within the same game, you'll see the best and the worst of this team. So the last three weeks for us have been crazy because it was after the bye, we were eight and three in the top four. Uh, thanks to the Pies beating the Blues, so that kind of shuffled the spot around a little bit for us. And um, Brisbane game wasn't too bad. We kind of got a bit unlucky, so we kind of wrote that off as like as a fan base. We're like, Brisbane at the Gabba, 26, 26 points or whatever it was, lost three players to injury in the game. Fair enough. Most teams would lose that way. That's a good loss. And then Spud's game comes around against the Bombers. They're under pressure. We always cop teams like that, just... The media's going at them. they got to respond. They come out and blitz us. And then um, the Sydney game's a crunch game, and we're always kind of nervous going into those because we just tend to not live up to it. Um, And that's exactly what happened in the game. You know, the pregame feeling was what happened on the field. We just didn't show up. So um, this week it's now a new feeling of no expectation. It's all on the blues. The pressure's on the blues. Yeah. So it's a a different feeling. Talking about us. Are we genuine flag contenders? Are Are you? Are we that? Are we, you know? um, Oh, man, we haven't even played finals yet. So that's it. I I believe for the first time in a very long time that we're a pretty good team when we're at our best. Um, I believe that our best football can match it with just about anyone on any given day. Um, however, just because I feel that way, it doesn't mean we're going to win on Friday. Um, you know, we're, I think we've shown a little bit more this year where other teams are probably respecting us a bit more. I think in the past it was a bit of, um, oh, it's Carlton. We know that we're, you know, mentally stronger than them. So I, I think, I think we're a much better team than, you know, 12 months ago. Yeah. Um, but I also am very aware that, if we don't come with that same hunt mentality and if St. Kilda hunt us this week, you can beat us for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's frustrating thing. We can, we've proven it. We, we beat Geelong, we beat Richmond, we beat Fremantle in Perth. 
which is very hard to do. Um, you know, our performances at their best are top four levels, you know. They're very, yeah. very good. And um, the last three weeks we haven't seen it. But we all know that if Max King's on, if Jack Steele gets a bit of a run, his first game back last week was pretty good, but he'll be better. Um, Paddy Ryder and Brad Hill potentially, depending on what happens with the news, they could be straight in. Um, Jack Higgins as well, he was dropped. So there's a few guns that could come in and they're very important for us being small, a runner, and obviously our second ruck that can kick goals as well. Mm. So if we get them back, I think I'll feel a little bit better about Friday night, but it's just it's just the midfield, you know, against Carlton. It's Everyone talked about Melbourne's midfield last year and how good they were and how they hunted the ball, but they could also go forward and kick goals and their clearances are clean. It's now on the flip, you know, Carlton's midfield's following suit a little bit. You know, you've got Cripps in the best form of his life all year, Brownlow, fancy, particularly the first 10 weeks. Walsh had a blinder last week. I think it was Cripps tagged last week, and that's why Walsh got off the chain a little bit. He's just Cripps has just been filling in with ruck duties recently ah, okay. around the ground. Yeah. It's, um, he just hasn't quite been at his prolific best, but he's still been... It's like it's like Jack Steele. If Jack Steele doesn't get thirty five, doesn't mean he's had a bad game. He's just not, you know, locking in the three votes type game. Yeah, yeah. So midfield for me is kind of if we break even, that's huge, and the game's on. It's in the balance. If we win the midfield battle, um, which will take a lot because your midfield is very good and ours has been down big time, um, that'll obviously give us the best chance of winning. And then if we're losing the midfield. That's, you know, p- potential to get fairly ugly based on your forward line and how how powerful it is in the air, but also your smalls. You know, your underrated smalls. I think um, who's your who, um, is it Durden? I can't remember. It's, it's Corey Durden. Like, <laughs> he's he's quite good. Um, there was another guy. You posted a um, video of him during the week kicking a goal on the run. It's his name again. Um, starts with C. Uh, Cottrell. Cottrell. Like you've got. I don't know. You're just finding goals from players that not many outsiders would know. But they're when you look at the goal sheets every week, they're always there with one or two. Do you know what I mean? They're not. They're not inconsistent. They're always around there supporting the talls. So even if we stop the talls, it's then it it becomes a ground ball, and um, you're still very good there. So you've got you've got all the bases covered in my eyes at the moment. I don't see, from my point of view, a clear weak link. The weakest might be the back line, depending on if obviously your best defender comes back this week or not. But I'm hearing he may. So mm, yeah, well, I will get to the ins in a moment, but I, I do want to touch a little bit more on the Saints situation because being being the outsider that I am, I'm never going to understand the full context. And I know that you watch every second and read every word. Um, since I remember when the buy happened, and I think there was something about rats rallying the troops and talking about this is the real opportunity to um, to really do something special. I, I remember s- some rhetoric mm. around that. Is it expectation that you put it down to what's happened for you guys with your, like, it, it's just a low. I, I feel like it's just a down patch and you're going to get through it at some point. It's just a matter of whether it's this week, next week or whenever. Yeah. So what what is it in your eyes? What What is the situation? Um, some people will say it's coaching. Um, some people will say, and I've heard rumors that the training load has gone up significantly in the lead up to this big four week period where we play all the teams in the top eight, which is what a lot of the top four to six teams do at this time. They up that training regime to prep for finals. Um, and Geelong did it two weeks ago and that's why they nearly lost to West coast over there. They have worked themselves that hard, but now they're playing their best footy. So no coincidence, Melbourne as well. Um, I think it's just attitude. It's and it's 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 just an annoying cop out, you know. Because when you're eight and three, you go into the buy. I'm just picturing it from my point of view as a if I was a player in that position. Great, eight and three. We've got a week off. Awesome. Let's take a break. Go to Byron Bay. See the family. Have a cheeky beer. That's it, you know. But then you come back and you're like, we're eight and three. We're in the top four. For the rest of the season, boys, we're not dropping lower than fourth. You know, you just got to set set a bar. And I just don't think our boys are giving themselves that 
that bar. They're not setting anything. They're just kind of like going with the waves, so mm. to speak. It's just like, oh, we're eight and three. This is good. And if we lose, oh, we're eight and four. That's okay. Eight and five, eight and six. Okay. Panic stations a little bit, but then we might pull out a performance on Friday, but then go back into that mindset of, well, we won, but you know, that doesn't mean we have to win every week sort of thing. Whereas mm. the fans are the opposite. We want to set that bar, you know, and we do it all year. We're like top six, top four. You're saying top four now. You would have said top eight preseason. So they change, but it gets, you're putting it higher, the bar, you know. But I see the difference with uh, Carlton and, and all these other teams above us is their players see that bar and they're like, yeah, we can, we'll take it to them. We'll, we'll finish higher than that. Mm. Whereas our boys are just kind of like, you know, oh, we'll just play and see what happens. Just taking it a bit too chill. It's fascinating. Um, it really yeah. is fascinating to see. Because, yeah, I, 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 when my observation of the Saints when you're at your best is it just looks so good as a whole. Like, you've got some stars, obviously, some mm. individuals, and every team's got them. But there's just this total system and total across-the-board uh, performance and kind of gets you thinking, wow, could the Saints really do some damage? Yeah. Um, so who is likely to come in this week for you guys? Um, if the news doesn't have its way, then it'll be Brad Hill would come in straight away. Paddy Ryder would come in straight away. Uh, Jack Higgins was dropped, but he, he didn't have the best game at VFL level. They lost, but he kicked a goal at about 20 touches. So I feel like there's no harm in bringing our... He's our number one score involvements player by a long shot. Wow. 29% of our score in some way, either kicking the goal or setting it up, 29% of that is Jack Higgins. Wow. But we dropped him last week and Dan Butler had six touches and kicked one goal in the first quarter. So that's kind of like where we're at. We're like, selection's not been right, I don't think, from a fan perspective. So I'd like to see Higgins back. Whether Butler stays or not doesn't bother me. Um, and then potentially a Tom Highmore, more of an intercept marker, maybe f- at the expense of someone like Ben Patton, who he broke his leg last year, missed the whole year. But he hasn't missed a game this year, but he's not been in his best form. I feel, I feel like Highmore could play a good hybrid of playing on a tall, maybe if the Silvani rests down there when he's not in the ruck or something. But he can also play on a, a small, like a you know fourth or fifth tall, whatever you want to call them. So, um, yeah, I'd say four would be good, four ins. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, there's plenty of boys from last week that could be dropped, let's face it. Only two or three had a decent game. The rest's very poor. So I'd say those four. Okay. We've really got two changes, I think, which we'll make, to be yep. honest. I think um, young Jordan Boyd will come out with the broken foot. And I think Stocker might come in. And then um, Chera's fit. So Chera, yeah, I, I would think, that. comes in. Yep. Um, the weedering one is interesting because there have been rumours that he would play this week. The club announced early in the week that he would play next week on the mm. on the website. But then Vossi said today that if he pulls up well at today's session, then he's a chance. So he, yeah, I'm telling you now, he's playing. <laughs> because every time, I'm not even kidding, anytime we play a big game, there's a player that's injured or suspended and their first game back, he happens to be against us. Bailey okay. Smith next week against us. Toby Green after his six-week or seven-week suspension came back <laughs> against us. So... Jacob Wittering, he will play on Max King. He will be lining up next to him at the first bounce. Oh, first bounce on Friday night. I can feel it. Wow. I mean, it's going to happen. If it does happen, I'm, I'm obviously, I think why I'm confident now is because of the injuries we have had to the back line. And like, there's been a pretty good result, even though like we've lost two of, before the free game, we'd lost two of three, um, but we didn't concede a hundred points. Um, and the back line held up, even though it had all of these these outs. You know, I think there's there's a graph out there somewhere that you can literally make the case that those defenders that are out would be better than the defenders that are currently currently playing. And there's just so many of them. Um, so we we were starting to talk about whether or not Jack Silvani puts on the long sleeve and goes down back. That's kind mm. of where it got to. Um, yeah. So you know, Weedering coming back, if it does happen, it would be massive for us, obviously. Um, but that boy over there, that's that um, that's uh, pictured behind you, um, mm. Maxi King. Um, he he 
he gives it to Weedering. He's he's a, he's, a, he's a nightmare. Where's he at? How's he coming along? Um, he's still fairly reliant on midfield delivery, and okay. when that's not happening, and we're not getting the ball and and getting it in the clear, it's it's he's finding it quite tough. Last week, I mean, I'm sure you didn't watch the game because it was terrible, but I did not. The way the we were kicking it to him, the way we were kicking it to him. I think even Ratten said, if you're Wayne Carey, if you're Tony Lockett, you're not marking that. You're mm. not getting near it. First of all, we moved it so slow that the Sydney defence got back. Like they flooded back. The whole team was in the back line. You're not going to do that. You're not going to kick goals doing that anyway. But then when we did move it fast, we were kicking it, you know, outside the stadium. It was so high and then he's got two or three on him and our mids just weren't smart enough to use the free man. They just were kingy centric. But if we're if we've got some handball receives in the game and we're running into the fifty and it's one on one, that's when he's at his best. Yeah. So if we can get him one on one, he has had pretty good history on um on, on weeders, I, I believe, in the last couple of years. His reach has been just too much for him. Way too much. Um, yeah. So and he's put on more size since then. He's put another five kg. So the one on one Obviously, Jacob's huge. Um, it's very hard to beat him one on one, but he could at least bring it to ground, and that brings Higgins and Butler, and hopefully Gresham, who's been in really good form, um, into the game. Do you remember the times? I'm sure you do. When yep. um, this would be a regulation St Kilda win, when Del Santo and Montagna and Revolt were running around, we just did not beat St Kilda. No, nah. I I remember, yeah, like 04 to probably 2010. That period, any time we played Carlton. I wasn't even thinking about a loss. Like it never yeah. came to me. It never popped into my head. It was genuinely, this is a 12 to 15 goal win. And most times, to be honest, like no offense, it was. No, you it know, was. You yeah, were there. Um, G Train would kick 10, Milne would kick six, Rui would kick seven. It's just, that team was unreal back then. You know, I still can't believe we didn't win a flag in that time, but that's just not the case anymore. When we play the Blues, um, I can't remember the last time I was confident playing the Blues. Last year I wasn't. I know that. The year before we played you at the MCG, and I think that was was that Teague's first ever game, or was that was... late in the year? Was this? It just, wasn't oh, his yeah, it might have been because you just got first, rid of Bolton, right? It was one of his first few games. Yeah, and the yeah. crowd was up and about. Like we we're both near the bottom anyway, but it was a big crowd at the G. Um, and you guys, you guys beat us there for by a couple of goals. Um, and then I think, yeah, maybe that was probably before that we had a few in a row against you, but since then it's been mainly the blues. So, um, yeah, not feeling confident at all. <laughs> the first time I came onto the Saints TV podcast, I was, com- we were both confident actually. I remember saying, who's going to stop Weedering and Jones? Mm. And you were saying about Ben King and whatnot. You guys did us very well that day. I think I was 2020. But um, yeah, it was, yeah. yeah, look, it's it's not a given this game. It never can be because the Sa- no. you know the Saints have capability. So when you see the Saints play at their best, hmm. what do you think is the ceiling of what you can do, whether it's this year or just with this group? I've always thought, you know, I've I've not really gone that far ahead of myself this year, even when we we're playing our best footy, because yep. it's dangerous to do for any fan base, let alone a St Kilda fan base. Um, but I've always thought that, you know, win a final, um, or two would be really good. So I always thought prelim was a big chance, you know, at our best, we can definitely make a prelim. And when you're in a prelim, that's not where it ends because it's a whole new ball game at a prelim. They're so unpredictable. They're the heart. They're harder than the grand final. Everyone says every player will say it's the prelim. That's where it is. You know, that's the biggest game of the year almost. Um, so I just always wanted to get get past the first or second week, and then from there I'm I'm happy, you know. Um, and I think that's where most St Kilda fans would see us, and definitely what the promise was preseason from the coaches, you know, from the board, is make finals, win a final, then you're all good rats, you know. So not making finals at all after being eight and three, I don't know, doesn't look too good from there. Are you still on the rats train? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm still on the rats train. I'm giving him, uh, I think, uh, technically August 1st is when they, uh, you can start announcing contract renewals for coaches. So 
I know that some people, and I did talk about it, might be done already for another two years, but I think that there's still time for that to change depending on how we go in the next month, which I think is fine because it's our biggest month of the year. Um, I'm giving him, you know, I'm giving him this four week period against Carlton, Dogs Friday night, Frio Saturday night, and um, well, Swans last week, you know, on top of that. So this, if we don't win any of them, then we'll, we'll think differently, I think. Interesting. Well, you know yep. that Rats is a big favorite of ours, even though we silly in a, in a very, really heat of the moment, typical Carlton response, uh, gave up on him. Um, many will say that it still haunts us to this day, but um, no, we do love Rats and I'm, you know, never questioning him as a human, but ultimately it's a win-loss business. You're either going to be having a coach that brings you to a flag or you're not, you know? Mm. Yeah. So. Whether you're St Kilda or not, you know, maybe the board will be like, well, we're, you don't want to be treated differently internally based on your past history. So yep. if you're Hawthorne and you've got Ratten at this point, they're going to be waiting to see how we go against the best teams. St Kilda should be that same mindset. Whether you've got 16 premierships or not, or you've got one, it doesn't make a difference. Mm, that's that's a what very the fans reckon. I yeah. agree. Yeah. So Friday, let's get some... Yep. Um, Let's get some predictions. What's the story of the game and what's the result? God, it's so much better doing predictions when you're actually like playing good footy because <laughs> you don't look so one-eyed when you tip them. You're like, yeah, well, I'll back my boys in there, top four. Uh, but it's, um, yeah, I think on the almost Blues Brothers potty, I uh, tipped, I said, if the best Saints turn up, it'll be us by seven points in a really close affair because our best is as good as your best. Um, so that makes it a very tight game. And um, if we don't turn up and we play the way we've played in the last three weeks, this could be a 10-goal loss. This could be a bad loss. Wow. Yeah, and I'm not the only saint to think that, mate. Like, we all know that if we turn up, this is going to be a blockbuster game in front of a big crowd. Goals at both ends, high scoring, shootout. But if we don't turn up, yeah, I just don't see how we win at all. We have to play our best. We have to play yeah. well. I can't see anything else other than the best St. Kilda football club in at least the first half. I, I just mm. – because yeah. I, I watched you early in the season and I thought, fuck, like they're really good. Like it's – whatever it is, like it's clicked. And I know you showed mm. signs of it a few years back as well and over the last few years, but it just looked really good. And you won, you know, two, three, four, five in a row and – I always internally say, well, if you can win five in a row, then it's a big, big statement. Like it's a genuine statement. Yeah. You're doing it over like a long period of time. Um, I don't see how you don't respond this week. Um, I still think that our system has proven that it can, you know, withstand the best teams. We've played Frio here at Marvel. We've played Sydney at Marvel. Both came into the game in hot form at their best. Um, mm. Yeah. So I expect there to be really tight and, you know, I'd, I'm only seeing a, I'm seeing a 23 point win in Jacob Wiedering's hopefully his return. Yeah, no, that's fair. I mean, that's I think most people would probably tip Blues by about 20 odd, based on current form. Yeah. Funnily enough, you've won three of the last five, and we've won two, and you've kicked over 100 points once, same as us. So when you look at it in a nutshell, over the last five weeks, it's not too dissimilar. It's just the way we've lost. Your losses were gallant. Collingwood, they just pipped you. You yeah. know, you had your chances. That's a hard one to take. And then was it Richmond again? Richmond just found a way and they were playing very good football in that run. So mm. the rest of the time you were you were very good. Although they were in Melbourne and away from Melbourne, that's kind of where I, like if I had to judge the Blues, it's like win more crunch games away. Like the Frio game, you played over there, big chance to prove yourself. They did you pretty comfortably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's the next step for Carlton. But obviously we're at Marvel this week. Um, you're like 20th game in a row in Melbourne, the new Collingwood. But um, <laughs> getting a good uh, run there. It ain't easy. It ain't easy being the heartbeat of the AFL, I'll tell uh, you. It's hard, isn't it? <laughs> nah, all credit to you, you, uh, your team. You know, Even getting a crowd, I was amazed by the um, the turnout to the Frio game. I was like 35K, Frio on a Saturday, whatever it was. We only got 33 to Spud's game on a Friday night against Essendon. Wow. It's like, come on. 
you know. Yeah, well, so you're going to have majority on Friday night, I can feel. But like you said, we kind of like playing backs against the wall. That's where I'm worried. That's the mm. only part that, you know, worries me a bit. It's that, you know, everything against the Saints, the sound, the noise, but you seem to find a way to um, to perform when you have your backs against the wall. I think you said that mm. to me last time we spoke as well. Um, yeah. The other question I had was about your defense. Mm. Um Dougal Howard is there. Yep. Who is your next like main defender? Uh, well, the th- it's the three of them. It'd be Dugs, who's in very average form. So he was one in the potty. I said he needs a spell. I went that far on the potty oh, on wow. Monday night. I said I reckon Joyce needs to come in. He's big. He's strong. He stands his ground. Dugs is just losing his head a little bit. Um, but he's the fullback. Then you got Cal Wilkie, who can play tall or small. And he's early in the year. He was all Australian for me. He was very good. Still pretty good. And then Battle's kind of the designated center half back. And he plays on that that next tall. So you're, who are your three talls? Would you have Kerno? You'd have Mackay. And would you have De Koning, Or is he too busy in the ruck? Well, it's 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 probably more of a Kerno, Mackay, Silvani as Silvani, the rest. Yeah. And then De Koning and Silvani will switch. So like Battle, yeah. Battle's actually a perfect matchup for Sos size-wise and style-wise. Yeah, um, I guess I, I'm just trying to figure out who would go to Mackay, who would go to Kerno. Um, jeez, it's a hard one. Some, uh, I mean, Kerno, Kerno, he's more of that explosive. Like he'll leap for everything when it comes his way, you know. Whereas Mackay is more of that lead. He's on the mm-hmm. lead, and Wilkie's quite good at kind of staying with his man on a lead. I feel like Dugs would have to go to Kerno, mm. and um. Wilkie would have to go to Mackay, and that's a big mismatch height-wise. But Wilkie's done that his whole career, and he's rarely had bags kicked on him. So Battler, he's a fighter. That's probably the one. And he's the most reliant, like reliable defender we've got. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. But they're not they're not the best matchups, let's face it. Yeah. Well, look, if we don't get the ball in there in advantageous positions, we, we saw that a few weeks ago. Like, yeah, we've got this beautiful forward line, Harry and Charlie are you know, they'd be number one forwards at most clubs on their own. Um, mm. But if you're not giving them, as you saw last week, if your forwards aren't getting the right supply, it doesn't matter. So um, it is going to be a big midfield battle, I think. Um, Jake, been a pleasure as always, mate. Um, thanks for coming and joining. And I hope that this is not the start of the St. Kilda run. Can you just wait till next week to start it? Because I know it's coming. Yeah, mate. No, we need to start it ASAP, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we just need to get it going. We need some sort of run. Um, it's, I was just thinking about it before I came on. I'm like, every time Saints and Carlton play, it's like one of the harder games for us to preview together because mm-hmm. we're like, our form's always been kind of okay or not that good, but we could produce something, but we don't know when it's going to happen. It's never consistent. What Like if we were both one and two right now, we could just talk up our teams and that's it. But it's like, but if St Kilda turn up and if Carlton don't turn up, you just don't know what you're going to get. Yeah. But uh, you, you're going there on Friday? I will be there. I will be there. Bells and whistles. Um, top level as always. So, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a big one. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I appreciate you coming on and being very humble. I know that I uh, just want to make sure the good karma comes your way. Uh, <laughs> I hope you, have, hope you have a good performance. But, um, no, nah, look, it's um, – mate, it's been great. It's been great to – follow the journey with you and be part of the community and um, yeah, a lot more exciting things to come. Thanks mate. Thanks for having me and yeah, have a, have a good one on Friday night, but not a too good one. All right. I'll see what I can do. All right, Matt. Take care. See you, mate.